the words of Christ, the letters in red, was like the Red Sea that sunk Pharaoh, who is Paul, with all his hosts and all his captains. The depths have covered them. They have sunk into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, have dashed in pieces the enemy. Who is the enemy? Paul is the enemy. But don't you worry for a minute, because Judah's hand shall be in the neck of his enemies. You know, Jesus says some profound stuff, okay? He says some things that will literally rock you right off your rocker. Now, he said, before Abraham was I am. Now, that just goes over your head. You can't catch it. Because you don't understand the parables. When I sat back and I really meditated upon this, I seen the sarcasm of Christ when he said that. He said before Abraham was I am. He was telling you Paul is no God. He was like before that fella came, I was here. Okay. He was saying before that God came, I was there. He was literally mocking Paul when he said before Abraham. Was I am, okay? He wasn't saying that about God. No, no. He was saying that about the false God. He was saying that about the ball. And that is your boy, Paul. You see, the parables is going into the parables. And that is the father and son religion. The father and son. The pair. It is the curse of Canaan. And it is the rebuilding of Jericho. And Joshua condemned the man. Who would rebuild the city of Jericho? His firstborn son would lay the foundation and the younger son will set up the gates thereof. That is going into the prophet Isa dying at the last day and Paul being the warden of his own prison named after him, Bulas in hell. Now, let's go on and talk about Jeremiah today. You will be surprised to know that Joseph was a picture of Christ. Joshua was a picture of Christ. Jonah was a picture of Christ. And Jeremiah all were pictures of Christ. Now think about Jeremiah. He was thrown in a pit just like Joseph was thrown in a pit. What is that all going into? What is the meaning of all these things? Now I've already showed you about Joseph. How he was a picture of Christ. I showed you how Joshua, how he was a picture of Christ. Now I'm going to show you how Jeremiah is a picture of Christ. Now, later, I'll show you how Jonah is a picture of Christ. I don't want to put too much on your plate. I don't want to overwhelm you. So let's deal with Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah 38 and 8. And Bedelech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, My lord, the king. These men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah, the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon. And he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. So they drew up Jeremiah with cords and took him up out of the dungeon. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. Now, this is all going back to the story of Jericho. When Joshua promised to save Rahab, if she did not utter their business, she had to let down the scarlet thread from out the window and let her family down by the cords, okay? In Yahawashai, you may call him Yahshua. I call him the prophet Isa. The Christians call him Jesus. He is so thankful for the nation of Islam who have saved him from the pit. You know, Jeremiah was going to be in the pit. But the Arabs came along in the days of Joseph. This happened and they saved Joseph, who is a picture of Christ from the pit. And right here in this story, we have Jeremiah being saved from the pit and we have a picture of your boy scar going down into the pit you see jesus has a twin brother and his name is paul he is the opposite of him he is equal in his humanity 
but he is opposite in his evil. That's right. And Jeremiah does not belong in the pit, just like Jesus don't belong in the pit, and just like Joseph did not belong in that pit. There's one man that belong in that pit, and his name is Paul. He is the twin brother of Jesus. This is why Jeremiah was thrown in the pit. But Jeremiah was pulled out of the pit. That's telling you that one of the twins belong in the pit. And one of the twins have to be rescued from the pit. The prophet Esau, peace be upon him. He was saved from Hades. He was saved from the prison, from the dungeon. Name Bulas, that is in hell. Paul is the man that belongs in the pit. He is the prisoner of hell. And like I told you before, he is the warden of his own prison in hell. Now think about this. Joseph was thrown into a pit. Jeremiah was thrown into a pit. This is because Jesus has a twin and his twin will be thrown into the pit. And Jesus will be rescued from the pit. Paul and his Christians and the so-called Jews will be thrown into the pit. However, the prophet Isa will be saved from the pit. Now think about all seven of Saul's sons which is a picture of Christ because David was a son of Saul. And the son of David, the prophet Isa, was a son of the New Testament Saul, whom we call Paul. And all of Saul's seven sons were hung. But Mephibosheth, who is a picture of Christ, was spared. He was the son that was lame on both of his feet. He is the son that was the son of Jonathan. And he was the son of the covenant of promise in between Jonathan and David. So David spared Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, because he was a picture of Christ. You see, the prophet Esau was born sick. That means he had to die in the future. He was like Jedediah. He was like David's first son with Bathsheba. The baby that was made by David when he killed a man and took his wife. This is a picture of the false David, your boy Paul. This is what he done. He stole another man's church and made a baby. He made a son whom he called the Lord out of that church. And that church has a baby called the prophet Isa. And that baby has to die at the last day. Like the Quran tells us, Allah will cause Jesus to die. So you have to go back to the stories to see the truth. David killed a man. He took that man's wife and he made a baby by her. And that baby had to die. And Paul stole the father's church and he made a son, a God. OK, and that baby or that God that they made has to die. You see, God is going to get all the glory once he kills the firstborn son. How come your pastor ain't found that out yet? How come your camp leaders have no idea what the killing of the firstborn of Egypt is really going into? That is going into God Almighty killing the idol in the Christian church. Now, why is God killing all these sons? Is he a baby killer? The Christian church has painted this narrative that God loves killing babies. OK, God would never, ever had to kill any son if it wasn't for the religion we call Christianity. He had to destroy what Paul created. Paul created a religion where he is the father of it and Jesus is the son of it. So when God killed the firstborn of Pharaoh, which is a picture of Paul, he was trying to tell you all that he is God and there is none other. If there wasn't for a religion called Christianity, there would be no sons being killed by God Almighty because God is against the killing of the sons. That's what he was getting on the Egyptians. They were killing the sons of Israel. And so God stepped up and delivered them like he will do the Palestinians. Justice is on the man.
help is near okay he's not a baby killer he only killed sons because there will be a religion we call christianity giving all of the son worship to the prophet Esau, peace be upon him now let's get back to jeremiah how do we know that jeremiah was a picture of christ let's go to jeremiah 1 and 5 before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Now, that is the perfect balance of Jesus. He is a prophet, and he was born miraculously. This is the reason why God Almighty is talking to Jeremiah like this. He's telling him, before I put you in there, I knew you, and I ordained you to be a prophet, not a God. Now, this is a game changer right here in Exodus 4, 16 and Exodus 7, 1. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth. And thou shalt be to him instead of a God. Now, God is telling Moses he made him a God to Pharaoh. Now, I'm going to give you another scripture reference. That way, you know exactly with no doubt. Exodus 7 and 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron, your brother, shall be thy prophet. So just think if God would have told Joshua this. If God would have said, Joshua, I've made you a God to Pharaoh, the Christians would have went crazy. You see how God is so wise? He knew better not to say that about Jesus. He only said that about the M. He only said that about Moses. He didn't say he made Joshua a God. He knew he would go crazy. That's okay? right. He is wise. He's infinite in his wisdom. He only made Moses a God to show you that Jesus is not God. And right here in this context of scripture, we have the parables or the parables. This is going into the two gods. This is going into Baal and how the children of Israel, instead of worshiping God, they will worship Baal. And you have Moses and you have Aaron. This is a picture of Paul and this is a picture of Christ. Moses being Paul and the slave of Moses is who? Joshua. OK, Aaron is a picture of Christ in this context. OK, he is under his brother, Moses. Moses is the man. Moses is the God. And Paul was the God in the Christian church. And Jesus was the spokesman. Jesus was the son. He was under the curse of Canaan. He was made to be a servant to his servants. This is the reason why Jesus didn't call himself the father, okay? Paul called himself the father, and Paul said he had a son in Philmon. Wake up! <laughs> this is the perfect balance of the prophet Esau. Just like when you go to Joshua, chapter 1, it reads, Joshua, the son of Nun. These stories all are pictures of Christ. Now, Jesus said something in his going. In Luke 24, that the Christians still have not figured out. He says in Luke 24 and 25, Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, if you look around YouTube, there's nobody doing that. 
But right here in this house, we call the house of David. We are expounding on Christ in all of the scriptures, beginning at Moses, beginning with Cain slewing Abel, beginning with Joseph being betrayed by his brothers, going on and going on and going on. We are showing you that the spirit of Christ is prophecy because the types and shadows of the Bible characters in the Old Testament have the truth about Christ that neither was he killed nor crucified, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him. So going on, we see that Joseph was thrown into a pit. And let's get that scripture. Genesis 37 and 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast have devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood. But cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness and lay no hand upon him that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass when Joseph come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat and his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit and the pit was empty there was no water in it. So right here we see Joseph being thrown into a pit is a picture of what Paul tried to do to Christ. Christ would have been in hell with Paul if Allah did not rescue him. If Jesus did not cry out like Jehoshaphat cried out in the battle with the Syrians, Jesus would have been in the pit too. You see the remarkable story about the prophet Esau, peace be upon him, is that he was rescued. He was saved, just like what his name means. Duh. <laughs> God had mercy on the prophet Esau. If there's anybody on planet Earth that knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful, it is the prophet Esau, because God had mercy on him. He saved him from the pit. OK, he's going to go to the prison, which is the judgment. And then he's going to be going back to the palace. Joseph went from a pit to a prison to a palace. Jeremiah went from a pit to a prison. OK, in Zedekiah's royal house, the palace. There's nothing new under the sun. Wake up. Jesus was thrown into a pit. If he would have associated himself with God he would have been right in that pit with Paul but see Jesus cried out and Jesus was delivered from Hades he was delivered from Bulas he was delivered from Paul's prison so we just connected Jeremiah and Joseph isn't that awesome okay now time will prevent me to go through the story of Jonah okay I want to go through the story of Jonah with you on another broadcast because Jonah is a picture of Christ as well, okay? The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. And this time, he preached the preaching that God bid him to preach, okay? And the nations repented, and we pray that in the last day, the Christians and the so-called Jews receive Islam before they become the ransom for the Muslims in the fight. Now, let's keep going. Let's talk about the innocent blood of the prophet Isa. Let's talk about the innocent blood of Jeremiah. This is going to be Jeremiah 26 and 15. Be assured, however, that if you put me to death, you will bring the guilt of innocent blood on yourself and on this city and on those who live in it. For in truth, the Lord has sent me to you to speak all these words in your hearing now killing the prophets killing the prophets and killing the prophets was something that the nation of israel were experts on they believed that god would bypass their judgment by killing their firstborn son or killing the prophets you see the religion of christianity came from the jews and they had this belief that God wanted their firstborn son 
for their sin. But God did not want that. He told them this in Ezekiel 18. He says the soul that sins is the soul that's going to die. The son is not going to pay for the father's sin and the father is not going to pay for the son's sin. Every man is going to die for his own sin. But the children of Israel, for some reason, they were bent on their sons dying for their sins. We see this in the New Testament when they said, should one man die for our nation? We see this in the teachings of Paul. Paul believed in one man dying for everybody else's sin. And that's what the children of Israel struggled with. They struggled with son sacrifice. They struggled with passing their sons and their daughters through the fire. That is ancient Christianity. Where you been? That is the ancient Christianity that Moses judged them on. Now, let's get some more scriptures on innocent blood. And think about Abel. Think about Cain. Cain, who was a picture of Paul, killing Christ unlawfully, okay, with the pen by letters. His blood, Abel, cried out from the ground. Now let's go to Jeremiah 11 and 19. And you'll understand when John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. Jeremiah 11, 19. I had been like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not realize that they had plotted against me, saying, let us destroy the tree and its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living that his name be remembered no more. Now, the spirit of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And here, this is a picture of Christ. This is Christ speaking through Jeremiah. Jesus was the lamb that was to be slain from the foundations of the world, but not by man. Could no man stand against Joshua or Yahshua or Yeshua all the days of his life? His birth was supernatural and his death would be supernatural. It was God who gave him life and it's God who's going to take his life. No man, not even Paul, has that right of taking the prophet Esau's life. So when he said he was a lamb, was he killed? Was Jeremiah killed? No. Was the prophet Esau killed? According to the Quran, it was only made to appear to them that way. But he was spared miraculously. So here we have the spirit of Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. And the spirit of prophecy bears witness with the Quran that Jesus was like a lamb led to the slaughter. And he was not killed by man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to cause him to die. Now, let's go to Jeremiah 32 and 8. So Hanamiel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison, according to the word of the Lord, and said unto me, By my field, I pray thee, that is in Anoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, uh-oh, for the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself, then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. You see, this is deep. This is a picture of what Paul did. Paul stole his brother's inheritance. Paul was like Jacob. That's why Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Paul stole his brother's birthright. And right here, we have a picture of Christ in the story of Jeremiah. Buying the field that belonged to the tribe of Benjamin, the symbol of the wolf. And that is going into one day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the Christians to be replaced by the Muslims. There's coming a day when Islam will take the kingdom from the Christians. Because the Christians have the kingdom right now. The black Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Hispanic blacks and Native Americans, don't have the kingdom and won't have the kingdom, okay? Don't believe that hoax. The kingdom right now is in the hands of Paul, is in the hand of Esau, the white man, okay? Right now, the nation of Edom has the kingdom. The white man has the kingdom because the white man is the teacher in Christianity, okay? But there's coming a day. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow the Muslims 
to take the kingdom. He will allow the real saints from Deuteronomy 33 and 2 in Paran to take the kingdom. Daniel saw this. Daniel seen this, okay? He seen the Muslims taking the kingdom. And the prophet Isa is the Messiah in the Quran. He is like Joseph with the corn. With the corn, get it? Corn, Quran. He is like Joseph with the corn, saving the world. Through the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who is the founder, who is the prophet of Islam. And Jesus is the Messiah. And he is the one whose inheritance was snatched by Paul. Paul took his coat of many colors. Paul seen a mantle in Paran and he tried to steal it. Paul thought he was the last and final Gentile messenger. This is the reason why he was in Arabia. This is the reason why he was talking about Ishmael. This is the reason why he was calling his church saints. Because Paul believed that he was the last and final messenger. But it's not so. It's not. And Jesus, peace be upon him. He will take the land that belonged to Benjamin. And he will be the Messiah of another nation, of another people, of another religion. Just like Joseph was the Messiah in Egypt of another people, of another nation, of another religion. The same thing happens over and over and over in the Bible. Y'all have to catch up. Now, I gave you the keys. The keys is the types and shadows. When you have a Bible teacher, he is supposed to be teaching you through the types and shadows. That's how you learn the Bible. God loves raising up a prophet like another prophet, like another prophet. He likes doing that as well with the false prophets. He'll raise up a false prophet by the name of King Saul. Okay. And he will use a story in the future that will be just like that King Saul, just like Paul and Saul are synonymous. Their names are both Saul. How come y'all don't get this? Their names are both Saul. They both are synonymous. They both are types and shadows of one another. Saul in the Old Testament killed 85 priests of Noah. It's safe to say he killed the church of his day. Saul of the New Testament killed the church. Saul of the Old Testament brought back a dead prophet through witchcraft. In the New Testament, Paul is guilty of sorcery. He's attempting to bring back a so-called, notice I said so-called, dead prophet. Their names are the same. They are from the same tribe. Everything you see in the Old Testament saw, you see in the New Testament King Saul. So, assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.